Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petite. Welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make those adorable quilted heart-shaped coasters. This is a fantastic scrub buster project and a perfect opportunity to sew and practice bias binding. So don't be scared, I'm going to show you step by step how to sew the binding around the curves, how to make those corners look nice and neat. If you want to create those coasters, you will need to download the free PDF template from my website. I'm going to include the link in the description box below. So if you are ready, gather your supplies and let's get started. To make your coasters, you will need some fabric. I'm using woven cotton for both. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to call one external fabric and one lining fabric. So just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. The external fabric is the one that you can see from the top and the lining will be the fabric that is underneath. If you worry about uh, moisture or liquid damaging, for example, your wooden table, you can use waterproof canvas or water resistant fabric on the uh, lining portion of your coaster. This way, when you have, let's say, a glass of water or a mug of tea and there is some moisture the cotton will soak this in but the waterproof canvas underneath will prevent the moisture going through and damaging your table or your counter so this is an option as well I don't typically use the waterproof fabric on top. This is just my personal preference, but it is totally up to you what type of fabric you're going to use. You will also need single fold bias binding. I really like to make my own binding in a contrasting color. And the one that I've made today is 18 millimeters wide or three quarters of an inch wide. And you will need about 80, 85 centimeters per coaster. If like me, you are using very lightweight thin fabric, I highly recommend fusing some woven interfacing to the back of the fabric just to give your fabric some stability. This is optional and it depends on the type of fabric you are using, but just in case if you want to add some stability or structure to your coaster so it is not flimsy completely, as you can see this one has just enough stability so it, it doesn't drape you may want to add some fusible fleece. If like me, you want to quilt your coasters, then I highly recommend taking the heart template and cutting a square of fabric that is larger than the template. It doesn't matter how large, as long as the square is larger than the template, so you would cut it from the external fabric and then from the lining fabric. I typically uh, try to cut them the same size. This way we don't have to worry about the fabric shifting while we are quilting. Take your external piece and add the fusible fleece to the back of the fabric. So what I like to do is to cover it with a cloth and then using iron and a lot of steam fuse it to the fabric. If you don't have a presser foot with a stitching guide, take your lining piece and draw a grid line on the right side of the fabric. Then you can take your external and lining pieces, place them wrong sides together, just like that, clip them around all sides, and then you can take this to the machine and quilt those two pieces together. This is how it should look like once your fabric is quilted. So what you want to do next is to take your template and cut out the shape of a heart from your fabric. So just in case if you are using directional print, make sure you orient your fabric the right way. 
because you don't want to have any accidents later on. So since I'm using non-directional print, I know I am safe placing it whichever way I want. So place your template on top. Then if you want, you can trace it and cut it out or just take scissors or a rotary cutter and just cut it out. Once you've got your heart cut out, what you're going to do is to take your bias binding and next we're going to finish off that raw edges. So what I like to do is to start from the lining portion because later I'll be able to see exactly what I'm doing when I'm top stitching uh, from the right side. And since nobody really sees what's underneath, I like to have a control of how the top stitching looks on the front of my coaster. So place your coaster with the lining fabric facing up, then take your bias binding, unfold one end just like this, and line up the edge of that bias binding at the edge of the coaster. So I typically start somewhere here, so along this side, because I like to stitch this portion first. So you're going to leave about 10 centimeters, five inches of a tail, line up the edges, and then if you want, you can clip or pin them together. Then what you're going to do is to clip or pin the edge of your binding around this curve until you get to this v-shape here so what i like to do is to take a pen and mark where the v-shape is centered just like this so make sure you are using a removable pen for that this way when i'm sewing i will be able to see where i need to stop because we need to make sure we stop exactly in the center so since I prefer to ease in my binding, especially around those curves, I'm not going to clip my binding. I'm just going to start sewing here and I'm going to stitch around that curve, easing the binding under the presser foot and I'm going to stop at this notch. If you prefer to clip or pin your binding, then you can mark that center point on your binding. So you know that you need to stop here. Once you stop at the center, so where you have that center notch, what you want to do is to take scissors and snip the coaster from that V-shape point up to the stitching line. So you may want to flip this over, make sure you fold the binding out of the way. You don't want to snip it through the binding. And I'm not sure if you can see it, I have the end of my stitching line here. So I'm going to cut the fabric from this V-shape here up to the end of the stitching line, but not entirely. So you want to stop about here, about two millimeters and eight of an inch before you get to that point. So take scissors and snip the fabric. The reason why I like to snip the fabric like this is so now it's going to be much easier for me to line up the binding around that second curved top. So what, what you want to do is to pinch your coaster like this. This will spread the fabric and create more or less straight edge. So now you can line up your binding around that curved edge so take your time again use pins or clips 
to hold everything together. You can let that go and carry on clipping. So make sure you do not stretch your binding. Instead, you want to ease it in just like that. So carry on clipping until you get to that bottom corner. Here we go. So once you've got this half clipped, you're going to stop. Then we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to sew half of our heart. So you're going to start exactly where you previously stopped. So at the machine, you may want to again maneuver the fabric so you have a nice straight edge. Sew the seam and before you get to this bottom corner you're going to stop. So here I'm going to mark it so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So here is the edge of my coaster and what you want to do is to stop seven millimeters or whatever is the seam allowance that you are using you're going to stop before you get to the edge of the coaster so what i like to do is to take a ruler and simply measure my seam allowance and make a notch so i need to stop at this point so seven millimeters or whatever is your seam allowance you're going to stop before you get to the edge. So as you can see, I stopped before I got to the edge. So now we're going to create this nice sharp corner. So to do that, you're going to take your binding and fold it at 45 degree angle, just like this. You want to crease that with your finger. Then make sure you hold that top down with your finger. Bring the loose end on top, so right sides facing each other. And what you want to do is to line up this edge along the edge of your fabric, making sure the folded edge is aligned at the edge of that coaster at the top. So it should look something like this. So here is the edge. So I have a little pleat here, as you can see. So once you've got that, this edge is aligned and this edge is aligned. You're going to clip that. Here we go. And next, we're going to take this to the machine and we're going to start at the very edge of the fabric and we're going to sew the seam. And you want to stop leaving a nice large opening. So I'm going to stop very close. I'm going to stop somewhere here. Once you've got that stitched, then you're going to join those two loose ends. So I have a separate video tutorial that will show you different methods of how to join the ends of a bias binding. So pick whichever method you prefer. I'm going to leave the link to this video in the description box below. And once you've got those ends joined, then you can finish sewing that seam. This is how it should look like. So we have the entire seam stitched. So next, what I like to do is to stitch a little seam around the top. So here, where is that corner to ensure I don't have any excess bulk or puckering. So if I don't do it, 
let me show you how it's going to look like. So if we just flip this binding to the right side and we stitch it in place, there is a lot of puckering, there is a lot of excess fabric here and usually it doesn't look as pretty or as neat. So I like to sew a small seam to ensure I have that corner as neat as possible. So this can be a little bit fiddly but stay with me. So what I do is to bring this binding up just like this and fold my coaster in half so you want to make sure it is nice neat i pull on that binding so you want to make sure the top edge is still folded here we go just like this then what you want to do is to sew a tiny seam. So you're going to stitch a little V-shape to take that excess of binding away. So what I like to do is to follow the edge of the fabric that we snipped previously. So here is a little corner. So what I do is to follow the edge of that corner, mark my stitching line, I get to the center and that from the center I stop and I go over to this corner. Here we go. So you're going to stitch a tiny V shape just like this. So to ensure I don't have extra bulk what what I like to do is to trim any excess. So I'll take scissors and I snip a little bit off on one side and a little bit off on the other side, just like this. So next, you can again refold this, take this to the machine and sew that seam. Now you can bring the binding to the other side. So you're going to fold it around the edge, just like this, and bring the other folded edge of your binding beyond the stitching line. So what you want to do is to cover the seam allowance and cover the previous stitching line and line up the binding around all sides. And to create nice sharp corner at the bottom, what I like to do is to start from this side, bring that binding up like this. I'm going to use a couple of clips to hold it in place. Then you want to make sure you have your binding flat, so you will need to create 45 degree angle just like this. You want to hold it with your finger and then you're going to bring the other end on top and you are making a nice pleat here. So make sure your binding is flat and then bring it on top just like that. and continue wrapping the binding around the edge. When you get to the top, you'll have a nice corner because we stitched the excess fabric. So when we line up the binding, this top will look nice and neat.
here we go so when you are ready you can take this to the machine and top stitch the binding around all sides so to ensure you have a nice neat stitching on both sides make sure you cover the previous stitching line and you want to be precise throughout the entire seam This is how it looks like. So as long as you are precise throughout the entire panel, your top stitching on the other side will look nice and neat as well. And just like that, you finish making your own beautiful quilted heart coaster. Well done. If you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know in the comments section. Otherwise, if you would like to see more videos like this from me in the future, remember to subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends. Bye.